a new study released by Pew and the Internet and American Life Project uh, has revealed that basically we are now self-censoring ourselves. So this isn't about the government, this isn't about people uh, talking about you, we're actually doing it to ourselves. Uh, and let's look at the study's findings from Rutgers University. They found that while 86% of Americans would be willing to have a conversation about an issue in person, just 42% of Facebook and Twitter users were willing to post about it. So this is, your, you'll do something actually in person when it's not supposedly being recorded, but then you don't really want to uh, make your statement when it's gonna stick around for a while. Uh, and then if people think their opinions would be well received, they're more likely to post about the topic. But even the thought that some of their followers and friends might disagree led many to self-censor. So I think this is really, really fascinating because we do all this stuff online, we put all this stuff out there, we're all on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and everything else, and we're doing it to ourselves. It's not just the government doing it to us. Uh, as a comedian, you, uh, you put stuff out there, you're supposed to, you're paid to right. say what you think. Do you, do you do any of this? Do you partake in the, well, the self-censorship? I do, I think the difference is, like I said, if I'm talking to a person and we're talking about something that's pretty dark and would agitate others, even if I make a blanket statement about something, you might give me you know, a response and then I'm like, oh, you might have a point. But if you put something just cold on Twitter or Facebook, then you're drawing people that you don't even know, and then people uh, just lose their minds. And, and so there's no give and take. Yeah. And, and because it's Twitter, because it's Facebook, like a text, you can't read exactly how people are meaning stuff. Some stuff you don't need to read exactly <laughs> because it's pretty foul. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I do think that's the reason if I put something up and then people are, uh, I'll take it down just because uh, it's not a real uh, back and forth discussion and and if I do learn something from it, I'm like, hey, I don't really like my position on that. I kind of changed my mind because someone gave me a piece of information that made yeah. me change my mind. Then uh, it's out there now, and, and people, you know, it, it's not forgiven. Like it's a conversation between you and I. Now right. it's out there, and it it's on you for the forever. Forever, they're watching you forever. Self censor. Do you do it? The self censoring. Uh, it's funny. I have done it, and the most recent example I could give is I. So I think that. Uh, there was a movie that came out recently called Boyhood by Richard Linklater, who I think is a genius. He's a genius. I didn't think the movie was that good, but it had like a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, and everybody that I know was just raving about it, and I didn't think it was that good. And I was like debating whether or not to tweet that I really didn't think it was that impressive, and I opted not to tweet it, because, for a number of reasons, because I felt like it was, you know, an, uh, maybe I was missing something. You know, obviously, I, sh I self-censored, you know, I, I didn't say what I really felt. But then, um, you know, I thought to myself that I'm such a fan of his anyway, that why would I want to, like, say something not nice about his work, you know? Yeah. But well, first off, thank you for unself-censoring right now. Yeah. So you didn't want to do it on exclusive. Twitter, you were willing right. to do it on YouTube. That's right. interesting, right. you should talk to your therapist about that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, do you think it's partly because of all the apologies that we see celebrities having to make? That's when I was reading this, that's what I kept thinking. Like everybody now immediately says something and apologies and we can, we can list them all, you know, from Duck Dynasty on down. Um, do you think that people, that regular citizens, are eventually gonna be held to the same standards that all the public people are? And I think, I think that's part of it, what's going on here. People are afraid that their boss is gonna see something, oh, yeah. you know, back, you know, this is what you're talking about, about the difference between a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm -hmm. and a public thing, but you should be allowed to have your own political views or views on social stuff without the fear that, you know, your boss is gonna see it and get fired, you know, right. get you fired or whatever. Right. Well, look, if you're, if you're working at a Burger King, let's just say, yeah. and your people are at the register and you're spouting <laughs> some religious ideology, you know right. what I mean? But, that's not correct either, but right. if you're on social media and your boss is on your Facebook, I mean, you have to expect that people are gonna be negative about that as much as they're gonna be positive about that. Yeah. And it's, it, it's there forever, and it will follow you forever. So if you are working at Burger King, let's use that example <laughs> for a second. If you're working at Burger King, obviously you can't do it right to their faces, but if you then have a Twitter account that has your real name on it, um, and maybe it does, let's say it doesn't say that you work at Burger King, but and you're writing some crazy shit. You're, like, you're for the KKK, I don't know. Um, should Burger King be allowed to fire you? Uh, Even if you don't say you work for Burger King, but it's but they know with a simple Google easier. search, yeah. Yeah, um, that's good. We're slightly yeah. off topic here, yeah. but yeah. No, I think, um, I think that people should be held accountable for their, for their actions online, for sure. Um, yeah, I would be curious to know what it is about 
you know, presenting a differing opinion that people are actually afraid of? Is it that they're afraid of being the ugly duck duckling, or are they afraid of not getting as many likes? Like, there are a few confounding variables in there that I feel like should be yeah. considered. Yeah, is it also that we just live in a crazy time right now, as we've been talking about with all this? Like, we have so much stuff between Middle East and Ebola and NSA and like just all this crazy stuff that I do sense online now. People are just yelling at each other constantly. Mm -hmm. And I do try my best to follow people I don't like mm -hmm. uh, almost as much as I follow people I like. And sometimes I don't succeed and I unfollow people because I can't take it anymore. <laughs> but like I try to because I don't want to live in that echo chamber. Do you try to follow some people that you don't agree with? I, uh, I do because, because putting stuff on Facebook and Twitter, I mean for me the thing that I have the most fear of getting called out is not being knowledgeable enough about what I'm talking about, you yeah. know, so I do. <laughs> That's never stopped anybody <laughs> else, so I don't I see why. But, but I don't want to embarrass myself in that way of just that I am not well read enough about a certain subject, so. But that being said, I mean, I, I do think that people should be held more responsible for what they're saying, and to not to just the public, but to themselves, and, yeah. and not just to be talking out of their butts. You, you know? know, to that point when this whole Yazidi thing happened on the mountain a couple of weeks ago, um, I tweeted that uh, something like, you know, the Yazidi are trapped on a mountain, ISIS is about to kill them, the world doesn't care. Um, it got 1,800 retweets. It was the number one retweeted thing about the Yazidi, and then we had airstrikes the next day. I was like, wow, maybe my little tweet had something to do with this. The picture that I attached to it was was a wrong picture. It was from Syria from like two years before. <laughs> so I made a mistake, right. and it's like, then I did issue a retraction for that, uh, but like. You didn't delete the tweet though, did you? I didn't, you, you can't, I mean, at that many retweets, you can't, right. you can't delete. <laughs> so that, I guess that was the message here. Don't delete a tweet if you have that many right. retweets.